My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning or this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and let us know where you're coming in from. Absolutely. I'm coming hot and live from Ground Zero, New York. And uh, my name is Tim Roman. I'm the CEO and founder of Roman Group Media. We're a branding and digital marketing agency. Awesome. So I got some questions for you that I want to kind of ask details about. I know it's very important for entrepreneurs to brand themselves and do marketing. But for some reason, there is a lot of people that are coming into the, to the space, but they don't know where to start. And I was at that point, I want to say 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago. If you had to give us a couple of tips, assume that I don't know nothing about branding and marketing. I just decided to be in online business and I just opened my Instagram account. What are a couple of things that you recommend as me newbie to do? Right. So uh, first and foremost is you really want to have two things that are really clear. You know, if someone wakes you up at two o'clock in the morning, you want to be able to answer these two questions very clearly. One, what is your message? What is it you do? You know, your elevator pitch, your purpose all wrapped into one. And then who is it that your ideal customer is? Once you have those two figured out, you really just need to pick a platform that feels comfortable to you. You know, it's overwhelming in the beginning. There's many roads one can take. There's TikTok and LinkedIn and Pinterest and Instagram. You know, pick the one that's more, most important to you. And the way to figure out which one that is, is, uh, is figuring out which one speaks to you as far as creative. Like if you're, if you're a good writer, you know, you could probably do long format blogs, LinkedIn, Facebook. If you're good in front of the camera, TikTok you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook. So I think once you, once you narrow those three down is just content and content and content. So, okay. So I get on Instagram and I, and, and I'm good on the video. Or I'm great. I, I creative. I can't write too long. I get on IG. I got on IG. What is your recommendation for me to brand and market myself? Do I come out and say, Hey, this is what I do. This is, I want you to start, you know, paying me for this service or that service or come check out my real estate or do like, how do you go about cultivating that base initially? Because it's very confusing to people how to do that initial phase. Absolutely. I mean, the best way to do it is, is think of the content in, in really two buckets. It's either education or entertainment. And whenever you turn the phone to create content or put the pen to paper, you really need to be in that mindset. Am I going to educate someone today? Like really educate someone, give them a tip, give them a trick, give them a know-how, a DIY, you name it. Or am I going to entertain? You know, if you're a funny guy, if you have a joke, you know, those are two ways you can really grab someone's attention. And that's really top, right? Top mind awareness. That's just the goal is for them to come into your ecosystem. But you know, the, the thing that we started with is your brand message. That should be all over your Instagram, day in and day out, subtly mentioned that this is what we do, this is who we are, by the way. So this way, at any moment, when someone comes in contact with you, they're kind of aware of who you are, what you do, right? That could be your bio, right? So it doesn't mean that you need to be transacting and selling and hustling and trying to pitch everyone, but you're really trying to create awareness and create attention so then you can bring these people into your system and then hopefully you guys can, you know, figure out if you're a good fit, if they're a customer, and then sales obviously takes over from there. So if I'm, a, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a solopreneur, just myself, I provide services. How often should I repeat what I do? Because after a while, it just gets annoying to yourself. You're like, dude, I'm like, you know, if I was on that side every single time and I were here, I'm like, you would want to vomit. It. You're like, For sure. yeah. so, but I feel like, that shouldn't be the case because not everybody's seeing your message every day, 24 seven, but how do you internally make the, make the peace with yourself that is okay to say that every time? I, I think, I think if, if, if there's a value delivery upfront, uh, there shouldn't be any guilt about a, a, a call to action, right. And ask to follow. Um, and that, you know, that's been always my, my system, my formula, if you want to call it is, you know, we always try to deliver so much upfront where it's almost just, you know, natural for the transaction to take its place. Like the selling is not really happening. That's very hard to do in the beginning, right? Since we're talking about a novice, we're talking about someone who's starting out, it's gonna take some time for you to find that language, to find that message, to find how to right, curate the content. So it's, 
not saying it, but it's saying it, you know? And, and I think you're really just in the beginning, just again, back to education or entertainment, right? And just because you didn't say anything about you and what you do in the piece of content, right? Like the piece of content could be a joke, but in there, you know, like in the copy, it could be like, you know, it was a great joke. By the way, all jokes aside, don't forget I do mortgages. You know, like you can mix it up with humor, right? You don't have to be salesy. And I think that's what you were probably referring to. Um, but that cadence, that takes a long time. I mean, you, it sounds like you have a wealth of experience and, you know, you know, that takes time. But in the beginning, you can kind of mask it under education and entertainment and, and ideally keep it that way forever. But not everyone can. I mean, what I feel like it's, it's probably the most common question that I get all the time is how do you grow a big page, big follow and big all that? But to me, it's like, that is the wrong question. If you're starting with that question, that means you want something for nothing. Now, I know you're going to put in work into it if you see the results, but how do you put in work in it before you get the results? So the right question would be, hey, I'm trying to grow my page. I want to give value. Is this good to give value? Is this the route should I go? Because I feel like, Everybody's trying to compare themselves. For example, I know you do funnels. I know you do a lot of stuff in marketing. I looked at your IG page. If I ever need any of that stuff or advisor help, I'm going to come to you. But I know that took time to build. So for me to come and say, oh, I want to be just like Tim in his business, and I just started like a week ago, to me, that's like the wrong mindset. Like you're in your step 20, and I'm on my second step, you can't just make that, you can jump one or two steps, but I think like jumping 15 steps is pretty much immature. And can you handle it? Because the way you do your followings and your cut, like let's say Tim says, Vahid, I can take in 50 brand new clients every single month. Cool, no problem. But what if we give you 100? then you're going to be scrambling. So they want the big following, but I don't think they know how to handle it. So also having that infrastructure, what do you think of that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, good marketing with bad systems is just letting people know about your bad service or product, right? So you, it, it, it comes naturally, but I think to your point, you said it best. I mean, it has to happen in natural progression. The problem today is, you know, with all the screaming through the social media and the hype around entrepreneurship and being a business owner and own your day, it's really skewed things, right? It's skewed the vision of, of what it used to be like, right? So it sounds like, you know, you have probably a lot more business experience than I do, right? Numbers wise, you know, 10 years ago, this was not a conversation. And 10 years ago is not a long time ago, right? Like it's, it's 10 it's, years ago, it, you couldn't call yourself an entrepreneur. If you didn't have a business, people would have laughed at you. They're like, what is he talking about? Like, I'm like old school, but I also understand the new school, the, the new way of going. So like a hybrid. So 10 years ago, if you would have called yourself a businessman and you actually weren't a businessman, you would have got laughed at. Like you wouldn't have been invited next time. They're like, this guy's retarded. Like he's talking at his that Like, don't invite this yep. guy. Like he, he doesn't un yep. understand what's going on. So to me, it's like you can't. I mean, I don't know. You can sometimes fake it till you make it. I'm okay if you put the image and you visualize yourself at the at the end result. I don't know. I think people can call it out. I, I think. I think what I do is, you know, when you're a young kid and you're a hustler, you want to take and and soak in the fake it till you make it. But if you really look at business ethics and the way things are done the right way and how big and great brands are built, it's far from that concept, right? There's no faking at all. It's, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. So I think fake it till you make it can be replaced with, can I create a bomb ass brand out the door so it already looks like I made it and then now I'm actually got to catch up to it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm part Russian and we have a saying it says that wherever the head points, the ass will follow, right? So it's like, it's kind of like that. So you, and then the natural steps will take its place. But to your point before, if you do not have your operation fundamentals, business management, operation, finances, 101, you shouldn't even be talking about or trying to spell marketing yet. That's my opinion. Tim, 
when you were growing your business, let's compare five years ago till today. How many hours do you spend in your business today? How many hours did you spend five years ago building? And I'm assuming it was five years ago. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, you know, 17, 18, you know, just, 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 you know, eyes dry, you know, and, you know, then the systems that you speak of allow, allow the bandwidth to be controlled. And, and then you have, you know, vertical scale. Now you can integrate and the value you created for others turns into networks. And then there's an abundance that comes back to you. Um, but in the beginning, it, it was just, it was just, you know, it was shotguns. It was just shooting to see what sticks and, there wasn't these platforms and there wasn't the way it is today and all these gurus and courses. And in five years, sure, a lot of shit happened, changed. <laughs> Listen, in the past 60 days, so much shit has happened that I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to stay relevant. But the key element here that I think that you could pick up from what you just said is that I feel like so many people out there, they want that macro wave style. They want that instant gratification where you got to understand that putting 15, 16, 17 hours a day, it should be your norm. Now, I'm not saying work yourself to, you know, to the ground. Just You just got to know if you don't have millions of dollars to put in branding and marketing and doing all this stuff, sometimes in a restaurant, if the individuals don't show up to their post, the business owner sometimes is cleaning the bathroom. Sometimes he's cleaning the tables. Sometimes he's serving people. Sometimes he's cooking and serving people at the same time. So sometimes you got to be able to wear different hats. And I feel like that is the reality check that so many people need to know that when you want to come into business or entrepreneurship, expect to do a lot more than what you did at your nine to five. Yep. Yeah. I, I always compare it to, you know, a sports, right? Um, you know, I, I think you will agree. I think the great, the greatest entrepreneurs and the greatest athletes are just have amazing synergies and similar characteristics. It's, you know, for an athlete, it's going into the gym, you know, killing yourself, taking a little break, going back and seeing how much more you can destroy. Except for them, I respect it more because they are actually physically killing themselves. We're just mentally doing it, but they're physically beating themselves up. And you know, today, again, the, the, the kids today have no clue. And, you know, coronavirus is, is, is the biggest evidence of that, right? Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm already at a point where I have a network of businesses that I talk to and, and there's entrepreneurs in my network. And, you know, 40, 50, 60 year old guys, not just young kids that weren't prepared for this are out of business. So I can't imagine the kids who didn't even see this coming from a mile away. You know, it's, I think this is going to give a lot of people a lot of context of how hard it actually really is to have a business, make it sustainable, get it to hit seven figures if you could, and then keep it there, right? And then do that over. Like, that's freaking hard. <laughs> Listen, that takes a lifetime to manage. I mean, <laughs> that's like, you just explained 25 years worth of living. Right? <laughs> that's what that is. So you got you to gotta put some time into it. Listen, Tim, thank you so much for taking this time, brother, being with us. How could people find you? How do they find you? Um, uh, the best way is Roman Group Media. Um, DM anytime. We have a podcast. We're, we give away a ton of value. I interact in DMs all the time. would be a pleasure for me to give back to your audience. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking this time. Stay safe. Thanks, you and I are going to connect soon. For sure, man. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.